Hello, and welcome to Lexicology, the study of words. Morphology is a word that is used in many fields besides linguistics. Biology and geology use the word often, since its basic meaning is the study of form or structure. In linguistics, we use the term to talk about how the form and structure of words determine their behavior and give insight into their genesis. Before we begin our brief tour, let's take a minute to review our word categories. As you learned previously, our lexicon can be summarized in eight major categories. Nouns, adjectives, verbs, and adverbs make up the lexical categories, while articles, prepositions, pronouns, and conjunctions comprise the grammatical categories. The lexical words can be thought of as the bricks of the language, providing basic information, while the grammatical words act as the mortar that holds the structure together. The lexical words are those that are most susceptible to change, addition, subtraction, and meaning evolution. The grammatical words are a fairly closed class with few changes throughout history. We won't go into detail now, but make sure you are familiar with the word categories and how to identify the words they contain. As you know by now, a morpheme is the smallest possible unit of meaning in a language. One way to think about words is in terms of roots and affixes. Roots are the core of the word meaning. Every word has at least one root that determines its general meaning. Bound roots are those that can't stand alone but have meaning. Plaque is a nice example. It means calm and is found in words like placate or placebo. What is the meaning of pell? Affixes are those pieces of meaning that can be attached to the root and its derived forms. Prefixes are attached before the root, suffixes after the root, and infixes in various places within a word. In English, infixes are not very productive. That means there are not many examples. But in languages like Tagalog, it is a common way of adding meaning. So, for a more systematic approach to our understanding of them, we can easily categorize them as either free or bound. Free morphemes are those that can stand alone in a sentence. Chair, giraffe, and schenectady are all examples of free or standalone morphemes. The key to a free morpheme is that it is a single morpheme. This can be tricky. Before taking this course, you probably believe that the word helicopter would be a single morpheme. That is, it could not be broken down into smaller units of meaning. At this point in the course, you probably recognize that helicopter can be broken down into morphemes. You probably recognize the beginning of the word heli in the word helix, meaning spiral. For our purposes, be prepared to defend your choices for the number of morphemes in a word by giving the definition of individual morphemes or by giving examples of the morpheme in other words. It is true that the more base forms you know, the more you will be able to recognize individual morphemes in a word. Just remember that you must be able to defend your choices. Free grammatical morphemes are words such as the, very, with, she, but, and these are the words that coincide with the grammatical categories that we reviewed earlier. Bound morphemes, on the other hand, are those that cannot stand alone and must be attached to some other morpheme. Most of the base forms that you have been learning in this course are examples of bound morphemes. Bound morphemes can be further categorized as either derivational or inflectional. Derivational morphemes are base forms or are affixes used to change the grammatical category of a word. For example, we can change the grammatical category of the word slow from an adjective to adverb by adding the suffix 
leave slowly. Inflectional morphemes are those that are used in the grammar. Let's take a look at the inflectional affixes of English. This table gives all of the inflectional affixes of English in the third column. The first column is the word class to which the affix is added. The second column tells you the purpose of the affix. Note that all inflectional affixes in English are suffixes. This contrasts with the derivational affixes, which can be either prefixes or suffixes. Since this chart contains all of the inflectional affixes of English, the simplest way to determine whether a bound morpheme is derivational or inflectional is to look for it on this inflectional chart. If it's not here, it's derivational. This diagram summarizes our categorization of morphemes. They are either free or bound. Free morphemes are either lexical or grammatical. Bound morphemes are either derivational or inflectional. By memorizing this diagram, you will be able to easily analyze and discuss morpheme types. I recommend that you commit this diagram to memory to simplify your understanding of the topic. As I'm sure you've noticed, words in English can be formed from the addition of many affixes. Let's look at a couple of examples. The word state is a noun, meaning condition or position. Think of state of health or status. By adding the prefix in, we change the noun state into the verb in state, which means to place in a certain position. This is clearly a derivational morpheme since it changed the grammatical class of the root. If we add the prefix re, we change the meaning to an action that is repeated. Is this a derivational or inflectional morpheme? Well, one clue is that it's a prefix. And we know that all inflectional morphemes are suffixes in English. Therefore, it must be derivational. If we needed further proof, we could go back to our list of inflectional morphemes and look for it. It's not there, so we can be confident that it's a derivational morpheme. In the next example, we'll start with the word act. We can change this verb to an adjective by adding the suffix if. We can then change it back to a verb by adding the suffix eight, activate. Then to a noun by adding shun, activation. Finally, we can make this noun plural by adding s. I'll leave it to you as an exercise to categorize these morphemes. Finally, let's take a look at a word forming process that is quite productive in English, compounding. Compounding is when you take two free morphemes and combine them to make a new word. In English, we can mix and match word categories to produce quite an array of new words. Nouns can go with nouns, verbs with verbs, adjectives with adjectives, prepositions with prepositions, and all of the possible combinations. I'll leave it as an exercise for you to fill in the rest of the blanks in this chart. This has been a very brief introduction to morphology. I hope you are starting to appreciate the architecture of our lexicon 
and looking at words in a whole new way.